Hello, I'm Zara Bardai from the Woodbridge Medical Center Family Health Team. Recently, women in our practice have reported fears and concerns over the cervical cancer screening changes. The purpose of this project is to empower women with knowledge. The following is an education series to provide a general understanding of women's pelvic health. Cervical Cancer Screening Guidelines – What's Papinin? We've taken you through the final frontier, shown you behind closed doors that there's nothing to fear. We've trekked through the nasties and dealt with the clap, so here we are to talk about the pap. Pap smears are used to detect abnormal cells in the cervix. At first glance, the statistics on cervical cancer are scary. Cancer Care Ontario reports 1,500 women in Canada will be diagnosed with cervical cancer this year and about 400 women will die of this disease. But don't push the panic button just yet. To put it into perspective, this means that of all the new cancer cases reported in 2014, only 1.6% 1 were cervical cancer, making it the 13th most common cancer in Canada. This brings us to the questions, how do we screen for cervical cancer and what are the guidelines for screening? Screening means checking for a disease when there are no signs and symptoms. In Ontario, if you are between the ages of 21 and 69, have ever been sexually active, and have a cervix, then screening for cervical cancer is done with a pap smear every three years. You do not need a pap if you've never been sexually active, you've had your cervix removed in a total hysterectomy for non-cancerous reasons, or you're over 69 with low risk. Not too long ago, pap smears were being done every year on all women as soon as they became sexually active. This recommendation has changed in recent years and has left many women confused and alarmed. The reason for this change has to do with a better understanding of how cervical cancer develops. You are not more susceptible to developing cervical cancer if someone in your family has been diagnosed with it. No, you did not. We can determine if cells have changed by doing a pap smear. The cells that are collected are then looked at under a microscope for any abnormalities. There are many stages of cellular changes that can occur way before cervical cells become cancerous. These precancerous changes are known as dysplasia. If you are notified that your pap smear shows dysplasia, this does not mean that you have cancer. It is not game over. Dysplasia, however, does need to be monitored and treated. This is done with more frequent pap smears and possibly more testing using a procedure called colposcopy. The good news is that most dysplasias clear up by themselves. 90% will go away on their own within two years. So you can see that doing a pap smear every three years is safe when monitoring for cervical cancer. As new research becomes available, expect that guidelines will be updated. Ladies, one last important point to think about. Human papillomavirus, or HPV strains 16 and 18, are the usual suspects when it comes to cervical cancer. They cause 70% of all cases. The good news is that they are safe, effective vaccinations that cover these strains and the ones responsible for genital warts. While the vaccine is routinely offered to girls in grade 8, it is never too late to speak to your doctor about protecting yourself. So let's start the conversation.